Today we're going to work on um, extending those front headlock chokes. So last week we worked more of the Darius Anaconda, some looping chokes and different things like that. This week we're going to work on the chokes, you know, guillotine, arm and guillotine, some of those type of variations. So I'm here, steer shoots in on me, I don't appreciate that. So I sprawl back, right? I get my legs back. Now, once we're here, boom. We're still going to get that same front headlock position. I want my front shoulder right on this Kanji logo right here. And I want to get all my weight into the center of his back, right where his neck connects into his shoulder. That way he's carrying all 185 pounds of sexy I am right now. Okay. Hey. Um, I'm going to make sure he's carrying all that weight here. I'm then going to chin cup here and pull up that elbow so that he's getting a nice good stretch in the shoulder and I have good control. Now, a lot of people are going to feel comfortable here because if I just circle around to the back and don't get hooked, he's not giving up points. So if I get to back here and I just stand here, you don't even get two in some tournaments, which is number one bullshit. I disagree with it, but I'm not ruler of the world. Therefore, I don't get to change the rules. So we have to work with, hey, what is this and what can we do with it, right? So if I'm here, a lot of people will get into kind of this downward dog, home alone type bullshit, where they're just kind of fetal positioned up, trying to make sure you don't score. So if I'm here, I'm grabbing that chin and keeping it, this elbow up to make sure that you can't get to that position as easy. Now, all we're gonna do is we're gonna pull guard into a guillotine. So I'm here, I'm gonna keep that chin cup. My outside hand is gonna come in and grab right in that fatty part of my palm, slash kind of that watch notch you know if you look at my wrist there's that nice little notch where a watch sits naturally on a men's wrist you're kind of grabbing that little notch right there into that fatty part of your palm so i'm here reaching under grabbing that grip now once i'm here i'm taking his head into kind of my lower rib right where uh, the crown of his head is right it's going to sit right here and i'm going to look to grip right there and turn his chin up so I'm here, I tuck his head in, here. Now as we're here, I'm gonna baseball slide in. As we baseball slide in, I'm using this frame right across his hips. If Austin sits up for just 30 seconds here, I'm using it kind of foot to hip, knee in the center, using that frame of my shin to manage my distance here. Because sometimes you're gonna to need to push him away a little bit, sometimes you're gonna to need to pull him in. So you wanna use that shin to manage that distance. So I'm here. Boom. My top leg, I want to come over his back, almost like a seatbelt. You know, coming kind of, he's facing backwards seatbelt. From this shoulder to that hip. Here. Kind of keeping a good active hook, because you may need to manage that distance a little bit. Now, once you're here, all you should have to do, I can do it one-handed, is curl your wrist in, put your head right in the center of his back. It's a nasty choke, all in a hurry. So, what it looks like for you guys sit up for just a second. We're here, I'm here, and I'm curling that in. So I'm basically trying to make your chin touch your chest with my wrist in the way, wrist and hands in the way. I'm occupying the space that allows me to breathe and talk right here with my wrists, all right? As I'm doing that, I'm curling his head, chest and back, all into a nice tight little ball. You do not arch out of a guillotine. I swear to God, I watch one of you do that, I will kick this poor little child in the face. <laughs> he seems like a nice kid, so I don't wanna have to do that. I'm sorry. Right? So I'm here, Austin shoots in on me, which is disrespectful, you don't have to shoot on me. Boom, I grab that chin, I grab that elbow, boom, I'm looking, I'm trying to do things, it's not working. Boom, I grab that fatty part of my palm, boom. I slide in, foot comes over, I'm already in 90-ish percent of the way. I'm here, I'm going to curl everything in, ear to his back. Realize guys, if I arch out of this, all Austin has to do is look up and he's gone. That's why I'm telling you, you have to reinforce this choke with the back of your head. Here, because now if Austin tries to grind his head out, my head's in the way. I don't even have my hands locked and Austin's already struggling to breathe. Right now. So you have to cover that choke. If you do it right, you can do this choke one-handed, but that takes a little bit of time to get used to. 
Can you show me your... Sometimes you go here, sometimes you're going not uh, block watch, block yeah. watch. Tell me why you're doing it. Ideal world that we all don't live in, right? I can grab right here every time my hand just kind of locks okay. into place. Every once in a while, you're gonna grab low. Every once in a while, you're gonna grab high. As long as it's in between about the middle of your forearm and the end of your pinky, set a grip and go. Because you're just trying to get that curling motion in. So Austin sits up to his knees. I'm gonna do it while he's standing here. So you guys can see it happens. I'm here, here. See how his, his neck is being occupied right here? by my wrist. My wrist is slowly crushing, 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 and the pressure from the back of his neck drives everything into my wrist. That's what you're looking for on this choke. A lot of people try to arch out of it, and that's the problem you run into. Is the second you arch out of it, all they have to do, push your face a little bit, pop their head. Questions on this one? You mess up the yeah. And they get it all the way down here, which I kind of lose it when I'm trying to yeah. measure with it. Do you just pop it up, or is there a trick to kind of work so, it up? There are friendly and unfriendly ways to convince someone that their chin should be up. One of the simplest ones, if Austin tucks his chin underneath there, I'm going to, with my middle two fingers, if Austin tucks his chin real tight, I'm going to grab right at the point of his chin, which even if he's got a real good tuck, is tough to hide. I'm going to let him know that you should probably open that up. Not against the rules, but very unfriendly. Not something I recommend doing in polite company or class. Um, but if he really tucks that chin down tight and it, you know, you're running into it, what I always like to do is I'll run my thumb straight down the middle of his jawline here, and that generally will give you the peak you need. But if he's being real stubborn with it, like you're trying to pull out a dresser drawer, Coming here. <laughs> it's a violent sport. Feel, you'll feel the trigger point right it, right behind your jawbone. If you grab that, there's a soft spot right where your jaw drops off. I'm just gonna grab that. Yoink. Yoink. You'll, <laughs> you'll open your chin up. You can hit any of those soft spots. Yeah. Yeah. You can. Listen. You cannot enter an orifice. I can grab just about anything else. That's why when I tell you guys, if I need to open your guard and I'm getting pissed enough, I'm just gonna grab your collarbone. Because that's not illegal, it's just frowning. Yeah, it's awful. I'm a mean person. But I came to win. Listen, we signed death waivers to choke each other in pajamas. At some point, politeness has to leave the room if we're going to compete at a high level. All right? Questions on this one? I'm going to run, walk through it one more time. Okay, one question. Um, when you're grabbing the wrist, are you, is the thumb going all the way around? Or no thumb. Okay. So, dumb monkey slap without thumbs. The reason I say that is because if I grab here and I have this and you your finger gets caught in the gi, I will snap all of this. And most of us use our hands to make a living, so I don't recommend that. That's why you always, nine times out of 10, you're, you're no thumbing a lot of things. Not just because I have weird toe thumbs, but I guess you shouldn't. Okay. All right. So we're here with steers. He's disrespectful and shoots on me. I don't appreciate that. Boom. I get my grips. I look, I look to spin behind. I always want to take the back first. Boom, I get my grip, slide in here. By the time you get to this leg coming over, everyone saw Austin's hand come up there pretty quickly to loosen. By the time you get to here, it should be basically in. All right. So as you slide in, you should be curling everything, collapsing that pressure. By the time your foot lands on top, you should be getting a good tap. If not, you need some adjustments, okay? All right, one, two, three, one. Austin shoots in. I don't appreciate that. Boom, I scroll back. A couple of you guys are struggling when to transition from the elbow to the grip. I always want to sit him back kind of into his heel. So when I'm here and I'm up on my toes, see how Austin sat forward? He's still got a lot of control. I like to set him back so that way I can transition in. That's one thing you want to see is I want to set him up just that little bit. You don't have to quite stand him up like that, but you at least want to push him forward. It's the same thing we talk about all the time. If I pull Austin's head down, he wants to bring his head up. So if I push Austin back, he's going to drive forward, which is going to drive him into this choke. All right? So questions on anything you guys ran into on that? Okay. So... Yeah, no, that's that's a good thing. 
So next piece of this. So this last one we were going without the arm. This one we're gonna go with the arm. Only a couple real differences in between the two. Biggest one being a little bit on the setup and a little bit on the squeeze. So when I'm here, once I'm here, I'm looking to... So I'm looking to drive him back that little bit and I wanna pull this arm up. I want his arm next to his ear and I wanna come here. So instead of grabbing that chin, I'm locking my hands almost next to his armpit and kind of in that shoulder here. So I'm here and I'm grabbing the fatty part of the outside hand, which is the biggest difference. Because on the last one, you grab the fatty part of your inside hand. This one, you're grabbing the fatty part of the outside hand. Here, I'm still sitting in here. Same thing, you're curling your wrist in and covering your choke. Really fun to be Austin today. Every day. So we're here. Boom. I sat him up, I pulled that in, and I grabbed that fatty part of my wrist. Austin's already being slightly choked here. Uh -huh. That's why when I come in, I want his arm across my body. I'm pulling in and in, covering that choke. What a lot of you will do on this, and I will have to smack Dewey for it probably, Good. is a lot of you guys will come here and you'll cut this arm across the same side of your body. Like this. The problem is that loosens your choke quite a bit. I can probably still get it, but it's a lot looser, isn't it? You want to tuck that elbow tight so that way this arm comes across your body. Does that make sense? So when I'm here, it's not I'm pulling this arm up and coming in. I'm pulling this arm across and coming to it. I see what you're grabbing the outside. I saw it from there. Yeah. That slight change is the reason you change your hand grip. Can I see that again? Mm -hmm. So we're here. Austin loves questions today. So I'm here. Boom. I bring that elbow up and I reach across for that grip. So if I stand Austin up vertically for this, I'm here. I bring that elbow up and I don't reach here to here. I go across to here. That what allows me to switch in, curl in, finish. So that keeps the arm across, goes to the arm to here, push it back. Yeah. You pull that up and then that, the chin strap hand reaches over and across to grab that outside wrist. Okay. You don't grab the fatty part on this one? You just it just makes it tighter. It yeah, the just the, the better grip you can get, the better. Okay. Uh, ideal world that we all live in, right? You can grab kind of in that fatty part to that wrist. Yeah. Just depends on speed is a little more of the essence here. Um, on this one. Whatever you grab. Yeah, get a grip. <laughs> if, if you get down here and you're like, oh shit, it's not working, then you can ratchet your grips. You know, you can start adjusting things underneath here. But for me, it's like, okay, I don't care if this wrist is a half inch too deep because I can still get to where I need to be because Austin gets choked during that entire time. <laughs> Breathe for a minute. Things. You can really finish this tight. Keep your elbows in, keep your head Head tight. Back. As long as I can do that, and I keep part of his head under the floor. Yeah. And then my head covers kind of the back of his head. Yeah. And I squeeze in, then I'm good. Yeah, the way I like to refer to this is reinforcing your choke. So when I'm here, I'm going to do this, I'm going to let go of my hands here in a second so that I can talk and Austin doesn't die. Um, I like him enough to not kill him today. When I'm here, right, I'm going to let go of my hands. But if I start to crank this choke, naturally Austin's going to start to try to pull his head out back like that. That's a very common response. People do one of two things. They'll either start to back out of it and try to almost like frame my face away here. So they'll be here and they'll be trying to kind of frame you away to try to get your head away. Or they'll drive in and kind of tripod up, trying to create space going kind of the other way, start looking their head up and start kind of creating a little bit of defensive space here. So I'm reinforcing that choke by bringing my top side shoulder and my back and chest and everything over the top of that choke. So that way when I'm here, my arms are working, my arms are doing a lot of the work, but now my chest, back and everything else is curling in as well and covering that choke. So I'm bringing that shoulder over, I'm bringing that chest and everything in the back. 
So that way, if he starts to back away from me, I'm still over the top of this chunk. All right. Other questions? So we're here in ultra slow speed. Boom, Austin shoots, boom, I sprawl back. Boom, I get here, I sprawl, I tuck his elbow, grab my wrist. Set him back, cover over. Foot goes in, foot goes over, everything curls. So you're bringing your legs to you when you just crunch. Crunch. Everything. Basically, I'm trying to fold Austin with his clothes. You know, it's like every, I'm trying to fold Austin in half because my arms are right here and I'm trying to crunch all of this together. Does that make sense? Sorry, just for clarity. So when you're tucking that out, you're bringing this hand through, when you are still grabbing the tucked hand or is it so, the opposite of that? So I bring this hand up, my chin strap hand comes out. Okay. Yes. Yep. That's the big difference. Instead of grabbing your chin strap, like we did on the last one, your chin strap grabs the opposite. I see what that looks like when you don't grab the switch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the big difference is when I get here. Because I screw that up all the time. The difference is when I come this way, Austin can move this elbow. Right. And that's how you end up like this and not being able to finish. Where if I switch my hands, I bring this up and here, Austin move your elbow. So if I feel his arm coming out, I know I'm not switching my grip. Right. Yeah, your, your hands are off. Okay, I got it. Sixteen years in the game. We, we pick up a shirt or two. One, two, back it up. When I'm here, I am reaching in and I have this chin cup. A lot of you guys are re-reaching for that wrist to make that grip. When I'm here, it is not a I reach across with this hand. It's I bring the outside elbow to my hand and then I grip. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. yeah. A lot of you guys are reaching with that that chin cup hand. That hand should basically go from chin cup to wrist with no reach. Can you stand up and do that for me? So yes. Yeah. Turn this way. So, I'm here. I am not reaching across here. It is, I bring his elbow to me here. Elbow across, I grab. Then I'm in. Does that make sense? You have to adjust once you get there. Slightly. To get under the chin, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's not on you. The other thing that made a difference for me when you, when you fixed the problem I was having yeah. was when I'm shoving that through with the outside hand, yeah. I'm coming behind the chin, so I'm not having to fight to get back up under there either. Yeah. So that I'm not. Really yeah, that's why I'm adjusting, I guess. Yeah, that's why I'm telling you guys to bring this hand in and just reach across, because this hand's already in position to choke, guys. It's already doing its job. I'm choking Austin right there. So you're actually choking with the arm that's already over the deck and not the hand that's, that's weak. Yeah. So that's a couple details just to clean up in the interims. Uh, this next one I'm going to show you is, uh, oh shit, my choke's not working, or it's working and he's tough, but I need to take top. So I'm here. I get this. I don't care if it's arm in, arm out, ghost, single-handed. I'm here. I go to slide up here and it's not working right let's just say my hands aren't in austin's tough any of those things are all valid options when i'm here all i'm going to look to do is i'm going to look to come in elbow over and i'm going to look to kind of scoop his arm here take top you can take mount you'll end up somewhere in between mount and three-quarter mount Land on top and then continue being violent. Maybe go ahead and finish it. Yeah, you can finish that. You can. Sometimes you'll let it go just to take top position. I'll take the sweep and then the mount points pretty quickly. Depends on tournament rule set. Situational. At that, that's where situational awareness comes in. If I take top there and I know, hey, there's 10 seconds left. He's got a tap. Points don't matter. We're going to squeeze the shit out of it. If it's two minutes left and it's a tied match, I'm going to take the two, I'm going to take the four, and I'm going to look to finish from that. So it's all a situational. But it doesn't matter which of the guillotine or which of the chokes you have. You're here. I don't care if it's both hands in. I'm here. All you do, scoop that elbow up. 
take that top position. All right. Questions on that? So one, work a couple. Yes. Did you do that on the side? Because I can't see the Absolutely. Austin loves that. So we're here. So as you can see it from this side. Absolutely, buddy. So I'm here. Boom. I get here. That hand that was on the chin and was choking is going to reach out. I'm going to pull that elbow up to my chest here. And I'm going to look to sweep him this way. Boom. Once you're there, you take top. You can go back, reattack the choke. Variety of options for those of us who are uncivilized and like to punch people. You then posture up and hit him early and all. Alright? Questions? One, two, three!